I'm so glad you could join us at Timberlake Online. Service will get started in just a few minutes, but first, if you're new with us today, there are a ton of ways for you to get engaged in service and get connected. Check out our built-in Bible and message notes, which you can use to follow the message later in service. I'd also like to encourage you to fill out a connection card to help us know you were here. It's also the first step in your next right step with your walk with Jesus. You can also let us know of any questions, comments, or prayer requests there. Lastly, don't forget to bookmark this page so you can find us again next week. And with that, there's really only one thing left for you to do, and that's come on over to chat, say hi, let us know where you're tuning in from. I'll see you there. Mother's Day and welcome to Timberlake. Whether you're joining us online or at one of our physical locations, we're so glad you chose to join us today. If you haven't already downloaded our app, check it out. It will help you truly engage in the service. If you select the Connect menu option in the app, you'll find message notes, giving options, and even a way to sign up for events or groups that are coming up. 
You'll also find a connection card. Please fill out as much information as you're comfortable with. We'd love to know that you are here and help you find your next right step. Memorial Day weekend is coming up soon. Be sure to join us on Sunday, May 29th, right after the 1130 service at the Redmond campus for our Memorial Day barbecue. Come enjoy food, fun, bounce houses for the kids, and time to connect with our church family. Our kids and student summer camps are now open for registration. At Adventure Bible Camp, kids will enjoy creative Bible storytelling, engaging music, hands-on crafts and experiments, and exciting games and activities. At our middle school and high school summer camps, students will build friendships with other students and have an unforgettable experience of fun and games outside of their normal routines. And above all, experience the transformation of Jesus. For more information and to register for any of our upcoming camps, visit TimberlakeChurch.com. What's up? I'm Pastor Charles. Friday, May 13th at 7 p.m. We are so excited to be holding a night of worship at Timberlake Redmond. If you enjoy our worship experience on Sunday mornings, you will not want to miss this. It'll be an incredible, inspirational time of music, stories, videos, and a chance to dive a little deeper into worship and connect with others. No matter what campus you attend, even if you don't call Timberlake your home church, we would love for you to join us May 13th. Doors open at 6.30. We encourage you to RSVP. We'll have food, giveaways, and childcare. We'll see you there. For more information and to get connected, download our app or visit us at TimberlakeChurch.com. We'd also love to get connected with you on social media. I hope you enjoyed the rest of the service. Thank you for joining us today.
And now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. You want to do. I'm moving forward to follow. clap our hands but we want his presence father you're welcome here
Come on, let's make one big choir. Say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. moments. We thank you for your presence. We thank you that we can spend time with you. Thank you for the goodness that we get to experience. And God, this weekend as we're celebrating Mother's Day, as we're celebrating all of the women who are a part of this great church, I just pray that they would all feel uh, celebrated, and that they would feel honored and loved and appreciated, not just from us, but from you. May each of us find our identity, find our value, find our worth, not in other people, but in our relationship with you, in what you view us as, and how you would speak into our lives. We thank you for this day. We thank you for these moments that we have together. Help us to experience your presence today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Amen. Well, once again, welcome to Timberlake. I'm so glad that you are here with us. Happy Mother's Day. I hope you're having a great weekend so far. This weekend, we're celebrating all of the ladies who are a part of the church. We have so many fun things planned, different things in the lobby as well. In fact, you can have a seat. While you do, this last week, we had some of your kids come in and talk about you. And so I want you to hear what they had to say. Take a look at this. And then turn this direction so we can see you. My mom has blue eyes and blonde hair, and I think she's really pretty. She has brown hair and beautiful makeup. She looks like me. I saw her dress up like a cat for Halloween. She has like brown hair. Black hair, and she brings a bag everywhere. How do I say blue? Rather green. Long hair. She cut it, Luke. She cut it. <laughs> I wish she did. Hey, Mom, what do you like to do with Mommy? Have ice. Get ice. <laughs> Blow bubble with her. To snuggle with her. To watch a movie. To like bake and craft with her. Ride bikes with her. Play. Play with her. Go shopping. He likes to go to the park with her and go on bike rides. And just hang out with her, shop, and have a family dinner. Mushrooms, rice. Imagine food. She makes amazing cakes. Shredded wheat and milkshake. Tomatoes and egg. Hot boiled egg. Spaghetti. Because she's always nice to me. Her best friend sings for me. She takes good care of us. When she likes to hug me, I feel that she loves me a lot. And then we get me. She says that a million times. A day. She's just very loving. She says a lot all the time. That she's glad to have us. She, she works really hard for us. She helps me when I'm sad. And she's always there. So my mom always says that she likes me and loves me. Sometimes I annoy her or like make her go crazy, but she still loves me no matter what. I love you, Mom. I love, I, love you, you, I love you, Mom. I love you, Mommy. I love you, Mommy. I love you, Mom. 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 And happy Mother's Day. Oh, can we celebrate all the moms today? Well, as you came in, you received a program and a connection card. For all my friends joining us online, there's digital versions of those as well. We would just love to know you were here, help you get connected. If you want to fill out that connection card during the service, and then you can drop it in the buckets on your way out. Uh, we're also going to receive an offering if you would like to invest financially in the incredible ministry that's happening here at Timberlake. You can do that through our app, through our website, or there's buckets in the back of the room that you can use as well. Uh, in just a moment, Pastor Ben's going to be coming up. He's got a great message that I know you're really going to enjoy. Uh, before that, though, you're going to see a video that's highlighting one of the ways that your generosity makes a difference through our local mission partners, which is the Seattle Union Gospel Mission. So I want you to take, this out. take a look at this. I'm Lisa Maga, the Emergency Services Director for Seattle's Union Gospel Mission, and we're currently at Kent Hope today. So the mission has outreach and search and rescue, so they're out in the street, meeting people right where they're at, in encampments and so forth. And then the hope is that they'll come into one of our emergency centers, either for men or for women and children. And then we have year-long recovery programs and aftercare, so we try to have places for them to be from the very beginning of street level all the way through care. I am having some hard times and the shelter has given me a chance to um, take some time and get on my feet. Have a obviously a warm bed to stay in and a safe place for my son. It's really just been an opportunity to grow while, I, while I've been here. So, Our supporters in Timberlake is one of them and we're just so grateful for everything they've done through meals and many other ways. Um, Anytime you come here and volunteer or bring a meal or donate funds, that's being used to transform a life of a woman and child.
Well, thank you for all that you do. Uh, those of you who are part of the church regularly, as uh, we understand God's mission is here in the church, but also in the community and in our world. And so uh, you're serving, you're giving makes a real big difference. Uh, I'm Ben, I'm the lead pastor, and I'm so glad that you've joined us, uh, whether you're here in the room, uh, you're in one of our other locations, you're online uh, for Mother's Day weekend. And in, in preparation for that, uh, some people sent me uh, some items I thought you might enjoy. Uh, one, this is a letter to mom. To mom, happy Mother's Day. You're almost as good as dad. Almost. Love Henry Molly and the stupid dog. Uh, this one, teacher told kids to draw what their mom's hobbies. My mom likes drinking. <laughs> uh, this one, dear mom, thank you so much for being my mom. If I had a different mom, I would punch her in the face and go find you. <laughs> and then this one, uh, my wife took up gardening. I wonder what she's gonna plant. <laughs> Well, we're having a little bit of fun uh, today, but we really want to celebrate Mother's Day and also uh, continue our series, uh, Surprisingly Simple Secrets to a Better Life, based on Sermon on the Mountain. We're going to jump a little bit ahead uh, today in our study of the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, now, moms, we love you, but have to be honest with you, sometimes you stress us out a little bit. Uh, any of you have a mom who is a professional warrior? Yeah, yeah. And then some of you just say that with pride. That's awesome. Uh, my mom, uh, very much uh, a warrior, anxiety. I remember when we were up here uh, staying with, I have some family lives over in Gig Harbor, and I was catching a plane back down to California when I pastored there. And my mom, she just needed to warn me about every potential problem in the universe. She said, you better leave early, otherwise you're not gonna make it through security. Better watch out at the airport, there's terrorists out there, be careful. When you're going across the Narrows Bridge, the winds can blow, your car could go off the bridge, be careful. And it's dark, and it's rainy, and bring your ID, and they're not gonna let you on. And have a good time, honey. So a lot of us, we have been stressed out by our moms. A lot of you are moms, and we have stressed you out. Now, uh, we're going to have a lot of fun today, but we're going to look at something that I think is really important. In fact, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus talks uh, more about worry than anything except for prayer, uh, which really in many ways is uh, God's uh, partial solution to that. But as we look at the words of Jesus, they're not going to help us that much in getting less stress. Check this out. John 16, Jesus says, in this world you will have trouble. Thank you, Lord. Uh, you know, and so the reality is we're going to have a worry in our life. In fact, when I first was a pastor, I used to preach sermons like how to live without worry. And I just want to say uh, to anyone who's watching, I'm sorry, because it's not possible. It really isn't possible to live without worry. It is possible to not let it ruin your life. It is possible to have immense joy no matter what difficulty you are going through in your life. And that's really what we want to look at. Uh, and see, this is why worry is a bigger deal than you think. Uh, one, it limits life-giving relationships. It really does. Uh, our worries can drive other people away when we're living in that what if. In fact, some of you, maybe some people have created some distance and they love you. It's just maybe the level of anxiety is not only hard for you, but it's also hard for others to take as well. Number two, it obscures rational thinking. It really does. The University of Michigan did a study a few years ago on this, uh, on worry, and this is what they found. 60% of our worries are unwarranted. 20% have already been in the past and are out of our control. 10% are so petty, they don't make any difference at all. And of the remaining 10%, only 4 to 5% you can do anything about. And I know what some of you are thinking, exactly, I just focus on that 4% all the time. And, uh, but, but here, here, here's the truth, 
uh, that there are real worries. In fact, if you never worry, that's a whole other problem. But it doesn't need to have the impact it has for you today. It really doesn't. In fact, when I think about this rational decision, uh, many of you know one of my very good friends because he's been teaching pastor here for as long as I've been lead pastor, almost 14 years, Dave Nelson. Uh, if you don't know Dave uh, Nelson, he's the guy who's sort of spastic and sweats a lot on stage. Uh, we have to mop it up every time after he's done. So, so Dave's been a friend for about 20 years, and Dave has a lot of anxiety. He comes by it naturally. I've also had sort of this role where I'm a, a, you know, speak into his life. He always wants my advice on that. And he calls me up a few weeks before Easter, and he goes, Ben, I have a problem. And I'm like, okay, Dave, this is nothing new, but let's go ahead. You know, roll them up, let's play. We're going to do this right now. And so uh, he said, yeah, there's a couple that wants me to do their wedding ceremony. And I said, well, okay, what, is it on a date? Just say no to him if you're busy that day. He goes, no, I'm completely free that week. It's a week after Easter. They want me to perform this wedding ceremony in Italy. And I'm like, this sounds like a problem. And, 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 I, and I said, what's the matter? Are they expecting you to fly yourself over? I can see how that would be really expensive. And, and he goes, no, they're willing to fly me over and pay for everything. I said, well, what about your wife? They said that they'd fly her over, and not only that, they'd pay for a week's vacation after I performed the wedding ceremony. And they'd give me a little bit of money for that too. And I'm like, David, you, you are oppressed. You, my, my friend, I could see why you have this anxiety. And so you're telling me that in a week you're completely free. And I said, by the way, have you ever been to Europe? No. So in a week you're completely free. You're going to get a one week's paid vacation in Europe that your wife has already always wanted to go to. And there's no problem whatsoever for you going. And he literally said, what do you think I should do? Dude, I'd take the week off, go to Yuma, Arizona. That's what I would do. <laughs> I'm sorry if you're from Yuma. <laughs> really. Anyway, uh, but the, uh, no, uh, but sometimes, here's the deal. You laugh at that and you're saying, that's so simple. He should be. But when anxiety and worry, and there's a difference too between the two, when it becomes real big in our life, Things that should be simple decisions no longer are simple decisions. Now, as, as I say this, I want to differentiate a little bit between anxiety and worry. So uh, some of you, because there's, there's just normal worries, there's intense worry. There, some of you are like me. I come from a family where uh, in our background, so going back uh, generations, uh, that, that we've not just been able to deal with this with counseling. A lot of people uh, in my family you know, go to good psychologists, go uh, good doctors, uh, get medications. Uh, every Christmas, we just pass out Zoloft to everyone. <laughs> and, you know, it really, it really is. Uh, but, but, so, I'm not, by the way, every once in a while, someone will hear me preach a sermon like this and say, that's great, I'm going off my meds. And I'm like, please don't. <laughs> no, God uses good medication. He really does. God will use that. And here's the thing, as someone who really comes from that kind of background, I can also tell you that that will not be enough. That is important to get you to a place of, you know, chemical balance. But it will not heal everything. There are some things that only God can do and some things that you need to do along the way. And so here's what I want you to hear. I want you to hear hope. I want you to hear how you can, if, if you say, this has been impacting my life too much, that you can reduce the level of impact. And sometimes it's just stuff you already know, and it's just going back to, to some simple steps in your life. See, also, uh, it impedes productive living. It really does. Sometimes we get stuck. You ever, I mean, how many of you have ever been worried and you're like, I'm so worried, I have so much to do, life is so stressful, I'm going to go to Dairy Queen and sit on the couch and watch Netflix for the next three years. It happens all the time, right? Uh, Irma Bombeck, the humorist of the last generation, said this, worry is like a rocking chair, it gives you something to do but never gets you anywhere. 
And then finally, it slows spiritual progress. Uh, and this is what I want to talk about primarily, uh, because there is, in fact, I was just talking to a, a friend of mine who uh, has been struggling with alcohol. And the alcohol has probably been a way for coping for anxiety, and, and, and he's in a great recovery program. And, and, but, but it was just this, the combination of dealing all with once, and he says, man, I'm finding freedom, I am finding hope, like I never thought I could find it before. See, here's a problem from a spiritual perspective, is you're gonna always choose worry or faith as predominant in your life. Uh, but they, they can't be equals. And, and in fact, if, because really what happens is when I'm worrying, I'm usually living in the what ifs and I'm decreasing the God's presence in the what ifs. And so that, that's what I'm gonna encourage you to do today. You know, one of the things that I love is in the Bible, uh, there's a guy named Peter. He is a mess up. He is one of Jesus' closest followers. And uh, in, in that, we see the last few weeks of his life, his anxiety, by the way, you can understand his anxiety. There are people who are opposing Jesus. Jesus is talking about he's gonna go to a cross. It is an anxiety-producing situation. And, and then, so Jesus goes to the cross. Peter, he, he gives up on his calling to tell other people about God and God's plan and grace. He starts to live in fear. He rejects some of his closest relationships. He starts doing some things. Does this sound familiar at all? The isolation and just the, I'm just gonna go try to survive. And Jesus, when he is risen again from the dead, he rises again from the dead, he goes and he finds Peter. And he says, Peter, I'm not gonna leave you here. And, and he calls him not only back, he calls him to better. Now, now here, I wanna stop right here because some of us, we don't allow people in our life. And God's plan, God's solution will always include other people. People who can say, hey, you're not thinking right, and they love you, and it's not a personal attack. It's just saying, God has better for you. So, so, so Peter, uh, he's called by Jesus, and then when he's leading uh, groups of Christian churches, he shares this, and this is a context for this. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. You know why Peter could say that? Because this wasn't a platitude. Oh, cast your anxiety on, on the Lord and he'll care for you. Because he had anxiety that caused him to abandon everything and live in that deep, dark hole. And he said, I've learned to trust Jesus and I understand when I'm at my worst, he cares for me. And maybe you don't need to hear anything else from me this morning, but you would hear that. Now, is there something you can do? A actually, there is. But understand, it starts with the work of Jesus and his love for you. Well, here's what I want to uh, look at for the rest of our time together as we go through uh, a teaching by Jesus, and that's how to keep worry from killing your joy. Now, you think about this again. Oftentimes, we think about these Bible teachings, and we think, well, okay, that's great for Jesus. He talks about, uh, you know, don't worry about tomorrow, all that. So remember, Jesus was maligned by his enemy. He was abandoned by his friends. He even on the cross felt that separation from God where he says, why have you forsaken me? Because when he went and took on our sin, there was that moment of separation and so he understood what difficult and dark days were like. And so in the midst of that, we read this teaching. First lesson we learned from it is stop feeding your stressors. We need to stop feeding our, our stressors. Some of us get worried about things, and what do we do? Well, we do, by, by the way, I have been banned by my wife. I don't know, many of you might think, does your wife have that much power over you? Yes, I'm frightened of her. And uh, I'm, I'm mad enough to admit that. 
But my wife, you know, I, I had some health problems earlier this year, some heart problems, all of that kind of stuff. It was sort of a big deal. And so I come home and she goes, you are no longer allowed to watch cable news. And I'm like, what, yelling at the TV? It solves all sorts of world problems. And, uh, and, and some of you are like, and by the way, I'm not one of these, you know, oh, don't, don't worry about anything. Politics, yeah, are they, are they ultimate? No, are they important? Yeah, I mean, I, that was important for me. I got my degree in political science, worked with the state senator. Uh, I vote every election, seven, eight, nine times every election, <laughs> you know. So, so I'm, I'm probably more politically involved than most. Uh, but I can tell you I've lived through every movement and you think yours is different. Not one of them has delivered because there's some things only God can deliver. Good government's great. Good government's not eternal. And so I, I've had to limit my stressors. And, and so <laughs> some of you are, you're gonna go home today and you're gonna call one of your kids and say, I can't talk to you as much anymore. You're my stressor. <laughs> 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 don't, don't do that. <laughs> but, but literally, there are some people in your life who you need to keep at a loving distance. I've had to do this uh, with people who I deeply love, but I just understand that, that I need to be careful. Some of you are stressed out about your work all the time, and I get it. You may have an important job. There's lots of people here with important jobs. But if it's your God, then you're stressed about it. But it'll be a bad God, not a God you want. You want to do well. Every Christian should be super successful at their workplace. We should work harder, produce more, get promoted. But it should never be our God. Jesus says, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you'll eat or what you'll drink, your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? And again, we, we often check out the context. This was written to people who, if they, uh, their clothes got ruined, they maybe couldn't afford new clothes and who may not have enough food. And so he's really saying in that real concern you have, will you include me? Will you believe that I'm more powerful than the problem you're facing? Part of it is number two is we need to think big, not small. Uh, we need to think big about this. And, and, and so what does that mean? It means the Bible talks a lot about the renewing of our minds. Uh, Jesus puts it this way. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Now, now let's just stop right there. Think about birds. If there's any creature in the universe that's on God's welfare plan, it's birds. It really is. What do birds do? They eat a little bit. You wash your car. They try to find you. They poop on it. <laughs> Job done, you know. Uh, so birds are uh, there. And, and that's really, and he says, look at how I provided for them. A, a buddy of mine who preached early on the first couple of years, I was here at Timberlake. Uh, he, in his late 30s, around 40, got multiple system failure. A uh, doctor told him he had about a year or two to live. And uh, it was so instructive for me. He, he planted, pastored big church, run 5,000 people a week in Phoenix, Arizona. He loved God. And it's interesting, he never, and I, I talked to him, he didn't spend a lot of time on the why. He, he, he knew there's disease in a fallen world, this isn't heaven. He prayed for healing, we prayed for healing. But here's the thing I really liked in that I learned from. He probably lived more in his last two years before he died and went to be the, with the Lord than he ever had before. He didn't waste a moment. He could have said, hey, this is, he, he could have just focused on the years he wouldn't have with his kids, on the years he wouldn't have with his wife. Instead, he lived fully. He told people about Jesus I've had people mention the sermon he preached. By the way, his whole sermon was, look at the birds. People would come to him and, and they'd say, aren't you sad? He goes, no, just look at the birds. And I was stalking, in a good way, <laughs> his family on Facebook and uh, Instagram. 
all his kids happy following Jesus, his wife. And he believed that even though his life was being cut way short, that God would provide. You know, uh, I was in Washington, D.C. with a lot of the church leaders. Uh, we were at the Museum of the Bible and doing some stuff there. And uh, one of the stories I hear, I love, lo- love going uh, to uh, Washington, uh, D.C. And, and w- for many reasons, it's our nation's capital. I get to see where all the money that I should have to buy a car went. <laughs> and, the, uh, and so we, we were there and uh, someone was talking about uh, Martin Luther King Jr. And, and, and did a little bit of research on that, that his father actually was a pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church before he was. 1934, he went to the World Baptist Conference in, in Germany and he was so impressed, uh, Michael King was so impressed by the, uh, Martin Luther, uh, the great reformer, he changed his name, changed his son's name, which must have been a little confusing. And, and there was, it's interesting when you see that there's always a legacy of faith. There's always someone who went first. And many of you, as you deal with anxiety and worry, you know what you're dealing with? You're building a legacy of faith. I know it's been a struggle for me to say, I, I, I don't want to live, I don't want this to be my God. And many of you know uh, the great March on Washington, Martin Luther uh, King Jr. is there speaking. And, and uh, I was listening to someone talk about that, and they said it actually uh, didn't uh, go as well at first. And then the gospel singer, Malaya Jackson, uh, when he's sort of there, and he's going to give this prepared speech. She, she just said, tell him about the dream, Martin. Tell him about the dream. And it was at that point he pushed aside his notes and gave what was from his heart a speech that so many people all over the earth for generation and generation have heard of. You know, he could have focused on, hey, my message isn't going very well today. I'm failing in front of all these people. And isn't it interesting, he needed a friend to say, hey, you know, why don't you share that thing that's on your heart? And that became his legacy. And you say, well, that's not me. I'm not, you know, I can't speak like that. I can't do things like that. Well, you know what the Bible says? That you, you, will, you will do things way beyond your ability as a parent, as a, a leader, as a mom, as a dad, when you allow God full access in your life. And part of this is number three, is to live the faith you say you have. Now, I know some of you are here and you're not Christ followers yet, which is great. I'm glad, you know, someone invited you. Uh, they may have tricked you into coming to church or whatever, you know. Uh, and so, so that's okay. Hopefully you'll have a good time. Uh, we'll meet you after the service. We have a little room back there, an orange robe waiting for you, someone to shave your head. Uh, it'll be a fun experience. <laughs> no, the, uh, seriously, uh, lots of people in this room started right where you are. Open to God, but not necessarily following God. But if you're a follower of Christ, there is a litmus test of how am I doing? And that's, am I living the faith I say I have? Well, I believe God is for me. Am I living like God is for me? Or am I living in fear? Am I letting the next crisis create anxiety? Do you know that people have had more anxiety in the last 36 months than in any time in our nation's history? And do you know when that started? A year before the pandemic. That people are more anxious now than they were during World War II or the Great Depression. Then, then, uh, the Spanish flu, which killed a third of the population. So you think about these crises, which were way bigger, not even remotely cro- close to what we've gone through, and yet for some reason we're letting anxiety destroy that thing. And you know what I think it is? Is we get this disconnect from God. And, and many of you say, hey, I believe in God. I know you do. But now it's time for us to, live, to say, okay, God, I'm going to trust you. God, I'm going to worship you. Know, you know, we're having a, a, a worship night on, uh, on, on Friday night here at the church. We haven't done one of those uh, for years. Uh, we have, you know, a, a few marginally gifted musicians. Would you agree? 
Yeah, yeah, you can give me a hand. Uh, but the idea isn't just to get another crowded room. It's been great to see so many people come back in the last months and, and God grow our church. But maybe you could get that intimate moment with God where you just say, Lord, I open myself up to you and I worship you. And will you heal that n- what nothing, no one else has been able to heal? Would you heal that thing? It says, so do not worry saying what you will eat or what you will drink, or what you will wear. For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows you needs them, need them. And basically, the Bible's saying that there should be a differentiator because of our faith. Part of that is developing a bias towards action. Uh, a lot of times we think happy thoughts, but God wants us to live a little bit differently. Instead of worrying about that broken relationship, why don't you go ahead and start, try your best to repair it. It may, it may not work, but the Bible says as much as it depends on you. Maybe you'd forgive that person who hurt you because Jesus forgave you. Maybe you'd stop worrying about what you do have and enjoying what you do have and maybe sharing it with other people. Investing not only in the church, which is great, but in the world. God, you know that God has other assignments for your gifts and for your resources that, yes, they're in the church, but they're also outside of the church and make a difference for Jesus. Jesus says this, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and these things will be given to you as well. This enables us, number five, to enjoy today. Maybe, uh, maybe you've told yourself, Hey, I can't be happy because of. You know, that I'll be happy someday when I uh, get promoted, when I graduate, when I have kids, when the kids move out, when I'm married, when I'm single again. (laughs) No, whatever. (laughs) That was was not from the Lord. That was not from the Lord. That was, that was, I I, I just need to read my manuscript here. The... uh, Stop waiting to receive the joy that Jesus wants to give you today. Jesus ends it with this, and he says, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Like, okay, thank you, Jesus. (laughs) Not totally encouraging, but what's he saying? He's saying, you know, you're going to have a survivable problem tomorrow. You're gonna have a survivable circumstance. And you can either get focused on each one or you can say, God is gonna be faithful. Look at the birds. Look at how God has provided. Now, you may have anxiety and worry in your life, but if you're walking with Jesus, if you're walking with some other people who love you, if you're living according, start living out that plan that God has for you, you know, you're going to experience that peace that passes human understanding. And that's been changing the world for 2,000 years. As followers of Jesus came into right after Jesus died and he rose again, and there were so many followers of Jesus. And there was a, a plague that, like we've never experienced, people were dying, and Christians rushed into the cities. They said, this may cost my life, and for some it did, but we're gonna love, we're gonna care, we're gonna make a difference. We're not gonna stop living, we're gonna live with more faith and love more deeply. In a world that is divided between Romans and Greeks and Jews and Gentiles, There are a bunch of people who said, no, we're going to find a unity that comes not from what I want to create or society says I need to have, but because we are all created in the image of God. Maybe you you feel a separation from God right now. And you know, that doesn't need to stay that way. So here's what I want to do is I want you to just take this moment and do some business with God. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, I thank you for each and every person here. God, I pray for those of us, we know you, but God, honestly, 
we're stressed and the worry is real. And God, we just pray that you would recalibrate our heart, that you would bring your supernatural resources into this moment. Lord, that we can start to feel more peace with you. Maybe you're here today and you say, Ben, I, I, I can't ever remember a time I, I've personally invited Jesus Christ to be the leader of my life and the forgiver of my sins. Or maybe you say, I just feel disconnected. I'm unsure. You can be sure in this moment. And so I want to invite you into a prayer. And, and if you would pray with me, you pray silently. I'm going to pray out loud. Something like this. You'd say, Jesus, I thank you for your love for me. I thank you for your sacrifice that you you paid the price for my sin on the cross, that you rose again on the third day, that I would have life if I would take you up on that opportunity. And that's what I'm doing today. I invite you, Jesus, to be the leader of my life, the forgiver of my sins, my Lord and my Savior. And the scripture says when you've made that decision that, that you are new, that you are renewed, that he will never give up on you. The Bible says that this means that your life has changed in this moment, in this life, and the next. The scripture also says, although this is a very personal decision, it was never meant to be a private one. And so we have a tradition here. And so we don't have you come forward or go to a different room or raise your hand, but just with everyone's eyes closed and head bowed, even up on stage to give you a sense of privacy in a public place. If you say, Ben, I prayed that prayer to say yes to Jesus today. That you would go public in this way. That you would just simply look up at me as an indication of that step you took. I'm going to look to my right and your left and you'd let your eyes meet mine. That's great. Anyone else? Okay. Just an indication. Yes, I said yes to Jesus today. Anyone in this section say yes? Okay, that's great. In the center section, you'd, you'd do that too. And just as it's a public statement, this is great. This is awesome and the balcony as well. And over to my left. That's great, that's great. God, I just thank you for so many of my friends who are taking this step of faith. Lord, we, we pray that we could live life more fully, not for our glory, but for yours. And we pray this in the name that's above every name, Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Amen. Well, why don't you stand with us? We're gonna end our service with one last song. Just remind ourselves how much our Father loves us.
celebrate. Yes. Yes. Well, listen, if you need someone to pray with you and for you, there'll be someone right down the front of the stage who would love to do that online. You've got people available to you there, too. Mothers, it's not over yet. We got something for you. We got some flowers out in the lobby. We got amazing brownies out in the, the lobby that you got to try out. There's a space out there where you can take a picture with your family. So go out there, grab that stuff. Please, please eat these brownies. Don't make me take these things home. Please, I don't want to do that. Uh, but we hope you have an amazing Mother's Day, and we hope to see you next Sunday. Have a great week. Thank you for joining us and being part of Timberlake Church today. I hope that you found the message practical and are able to implement those biblical truths into your everyday life in order to come closer to and be more like Jesus. But before you go, bookmark this page so you can find us again next week at any of our service times. And I encourage you to visit TimberlakeChurch.com to check out upcoming opportunities, events, ways to take your next right step, and to give. It's your generous giving that allows us to continue in making a difference with how the online community is spreading the love and hope of Jesus. And for that, we thank you. Well, we'll see you again here next week at online.timberlakechurch.com.